hustle to kill myself. And if I don't kill myself, then someone will kill me. Anxiety is something I deal with every day. Um, there's just some days that I can't get the weight out of my chest. I have no confidence anymore. Um, I have such low self-esteem and I'm just scared that when I am applying for a new job that someone's going to bring it up and I don't know how to explain it. I'm an educated young woman and I have future ambitions and I was canceled over something that is not my identity. This is a loving family's daughter. A random, completely uneventful night damaged her life beyond repair. When she woke up one morning to find out that someone decided, decided to post an image of that night on social media without her consent. Now, she wasn't acting with the intention to harm anybody or to express her identity that night. Yet, when there's a picture, there always is a story. To protect her from further harm, I cannot reveal any of the details, but what I will tell you is that she lost countless job opportunities, almost all of her friends, and most importantly, her confidence and her self-esteem. And what she got in return was serious death threats and strangers rallying other people to go to her house and confront her. She was scared someone would harm her family. Now, sharing her story without being able to reveal her identity because she's scared for her life, that has no benefit to her. She gets no credit for this. She made this tough decision to come forward. So tomorrow morning, it won't be your child and family that wakes up to a life in ruins. I'm a millennial. My first phone was a Nokia. Remember those. I made my first Facebook post at 24, and I bought my first iPhone at 26. And when I grew up, we had to call each other rather than sending text messages and emojis. And, you know, we let loose. We did a lot of stupid things without thinking it was possible that one day millions of people would be having access to what we were doing as teenagers. Virtually everyone in the world these days owns a smartphone. They're pointed at me right now. We're all exposed to constant visibility. Gen Xers, let's pretend real quick, right, that all your 15-year-old buddies and girlfriends that you used to hang out with in your parents' basement 30 or 40 years ago, that they all had smartphones, mm -hmm, recording devices. Imagine that you making out with that girl or boy from next door, smoking illegal substances, getting drunk beyond no return, pulling the pants down, the shirts up, all of that stuff, that would now be broadcasted to millions of people on social media. How do you think this would impact your life? What about your career? What about your family? Almost half of the adults surveyed by Euro RSCG, they worry that friends or family will reveal personal information about them online that they don't want to be made public. Appearing on social media is not our choice alone. Sooner or later, someone is likely to make that choice for us. But it's not just others that contribute to our lifetime content library. Children these days are handed smartphones at the age of 11. And that includes access to the internet. Now, in many cases, I'm sure it's done for security reasons so the kids can reach out to the parents in case of emergency. I totally get it. But what we need to realize is by handing over that first smartphone, we are also handing over the temptation to find a way to explore the virtual world that lives within that device. And that intended act of safety, that happens way before kids and young adults have the maturity to navigate the roads of the internet and social media in a responsible way without exposing themselves or others to possible harm. What this really means is that we're letting them behind the wheel of their future way before they have reached the legal driving age. Now, part of Generation Z, those are kids and young adults of the ages 8 to 23 right now, but especially that following generation that is entirely born in the 21st century, they are growing up with smartphones and social media exposure from day one of their life. 
And they are unaware that with those first few posts, the parents put out there featuring them. And then all the likes and the loves and the videos that they put out there once they have access to social media, they started developing a life brand. Now, a life brand is our digital fingerprint. It is unique to each person, and it is shaped by the collection of publicly accessible content shared by or featuring you and me, such as photos, videos, audio recordings, social media posts, and comments. Life brand literally has a life on its own. It gains power and strength over the course of a lifetime if we don't control it. And the more content we accumulate in the cloud on social media or on paper, if you grow up like me with Kodak cameras, because that stuff can still see the light of day years later, as we all know. We all possess one life brand. That's just one. And imagine every potential piece of content that we're about to put out there, like that bad tattoo that you once got that you now want to get rid of and you try to laser it away or cover it up, but the trace of it always remains. So we can go ahead and delete that embarrassing image on social media that we're not proud of, but chances are our BFF, yeah, that one day might divorce us, has already taken a screenshot of it. This next generation, born between 2012 and 2030, they will be defined by their life brands. They will either become a victim of it or with the right education and awareness, they can be the most powerful generation to have ever lived. I'm referring to the specific groups of kids and young adults as generation brand. This is the first ever generation entirely exposed to uncontrolled life brand creation from birth, initially through the parents that start posting about their kids on social media when they're small kids, babies. Now, if we think about women and girls of generation brand, they are particularly impacted by possible life brand damage. Current trends show that 78% of women use social media over 65% of men. And there is an assumption to be made that this could be correlated to a bigger desire to be liked for girls and young women. And I would even go as far to say that getting responses to social media posts, that can lead to like addiction. And we know with addiction comes the buildup of tolerance. So especially girls and young women, they now have the pressure to go and post more controversial or unseen, maybe even sexy content that contradicts who they are and that misrepresents their true identity. It's a spiral of like pressure. Who gets the most likes the quickest? And with that comes a bigger risk to harm our life brands and possibly our future. Now, what furthermore comes into play here is that women are a greater target for online harassment. The Guardian has conducted research into the 70 million comments 70 million comments left on their site since 2006. And they discovered that out of the 10 most abused writers, eight were women. We also know that girls and young women are three times more likely to be cyberbullied than boys and young men. Cyberbullying ties into life brand cultivation and how it can harm the life brand journey. And that's especially true for us females. Research has shown that there's a confidence gap between men and women, and that gap significantly impacts how we are advancing and managing our careers compared to our male counterparts. Now, studies have also suggested that our confidence builds with age and experience over the course of a lifetime. So taking those two things into consideration, technically speaking, we are already at a disadvantage when it comes to advancing our careers to senior leadership and executive levels compared to our male peers. Now, that's simply by confidence default. And now, those are women like me, professional women like me. They have not grown up with social media exposure from day one of their life. And they have not suffered confidence hits with every click, scroll, or comment they receive. If we think about the girls of generation brand that are growing up with smartphones and social media exposure from day one of their life, initially through their millennial and Gen Z parents, we are looking at a generation that exposes their possibly already lowered self-confidence 
to cyberbullying, to backlash, to criticism, with little to no education on how to act, react, and most importantly, digest such attacks on the self. So the expectation for these future women to enter the educational path and then the workforce with high confidence and self-esteem, that's not just unrealistic. That's completely unattainable if the current social media landscape remains as is. And putting girls and young women in the social media driver's seat without educating them on the impact their social media interactions have on their life brand, that's like sending them to drive on the autobahn without a seat belt. The consequences to their confidence can be deadly. Now, without this life-saving education, we are in fact shaping a generation of future women that is not well equipped to drive gender parity in business and beyond. That being said, if we are investing in educating generation brand and especially the future women of this generation, on the concept of life brand, before we give them access to social media and the internet, the girls of that generation that you and me will be hiring in a few years from now, they are the true game changers. They will drive a cultural paradigm shift towards full gender equality. And the current statistics on gender parity in business, they are well known. I mean, we've been talking about this forever. There's an underrepresentation of women on manager levels, and that's the true source for lack of female leadership pipeline. Women get less executive sponsorship. Women get paid significantly less than men. Women are also less likely to choose higher paying occupations. And studies have shown that young teenage females are already growing up with strong gender biases against other female leaders. And then let's not forget the COVID-19 pandemic that now has pushed millions of women out of the workforce. So we know that companies have a lot of work to do to help remove gender biases and to shape a better future for women and especially women of color in the workplace. There's no debate about that. But the only way how we can drive full gender parity in business and beyond is to create awareness and educate young women on the concept of life brand early so they can develop confidence and self-esteem um, self and position themselves feeling equal to their male peers by the time they enter the workforce. This is about giving women the power to initiate and drive this change. If we look at both dilemmas, and that's the lack of gender equality and also the negative impact social media has on our current and future generation of women, with social media usage on the rise, the time has come for a full reset, not just on the social media landscape, but especially on gender equality through millennial and Gen Z women actively controlling their life brands over the course of their career so they can become life brand role models for the girls and future women of generation brand. That will not just increase access to female leaders and executives through social media, but it will also help us shape a social media landscape that promotes women, their accomplishments and their successes. How do you control a life brand? A controlled life brand consists of two components, and that's our identity and our chosen purpose in life. Identity in the context of life brand is the summary of our behavior and language displayed on social media and in the real world, because everything we say and do out here, that can find its way onto the internet also. A purpose can be discovered through the vehicle of a passion, an idea, maybe your professional expertise in a certain field, or an interest you might have, or maybe a hobby that you pursue. And managing the connection between identity and purpose, that is crucial to truly controlling a life brand. Our behavior and language has to be in alignment with our chosen purpose and need to be portrayed with integrity. And that means that we start living our lives as our life brand. And the longer we control our life brand, the higher the chances that we will develop a life brand voice that allows us to drive and initiate change aligned to our chosen purpose in our social and real life communities through the reach of social media. Implementing the concept of life brand and understanding the constant risk of visibility we're faced with 
that will guide generation brand to become mindful of their behavior and language, not just on social media, but also in the real world. And they will develop the awareness that every photo or video that features them, that has the potential to permanently damage their life brand if a misalignment with their true identity and their chosen purpose. Now, if you are a parent, you're probably wondering right now, how am I gonna get my kids to control their life brand? That's gonna be really tough. Well, let me tell you, preventing your kids from going on social media, that's gonna be much tougher. Living our life as our life brands, that will also help us remove deeply ingrained gender biases and instead equip the girls of Generation Brand with strong belief, not just in their own, but also other women's abilities to lead. And this mindset shift is driven by millennial and Gen Z women actively controlling the social media landscape as life brand role models, transforming Generation Brand's thought patterns about what they can achieve in life. Life brand will be a confidence builder for all future women of generation brand, no matter their upbringing or their environment. We might not be able to change any of those things, but no matter the circumstances a girl is growing up in, she will very likely have access to social media, which gives her the power to control her life brand and with that, her future. Now, it might not be obvious, but this change right here that starts with all of us, every single one of us, wouldn't you feel you had done your part if you prevented an image or a video or a social media post from destroying a young person's life? Imagine for a second you didn't bother to bring life brand to your daughter, your cousin, your niece, your girlfriend, or the girl who walks your dog or babysits your kids, and one of them end up destroying their life brand in their life forever. If all of us educate just one girl or one young woman on how to use life brand to build early confidence and self-esteem, they can become whoever they aspire to be, despite their differences in upbringing, education, or background. And that's how we will close the gender gap together. Thank you.